Hello, Agape family and everyone tuning in, and welcome to today's message. I hope you will enjoy what God has put in my heart. Pastor is doing fine. He's just home resting. I uh, gave Pastor the night off, and he and Eva, they're off on a quarantine date. So I don't think they have anywhere to go, but they'll enjoy themselves. Uh, Dad asked me to bring the message. I couldn't turn him down. Um, what else did I have to do, right? Um, this is a little strange for me because I'm usually walking around over at the church. I'm going this way or I'm going this way. So I'm going to read off my notes and uh, just give you what I have for my heart. So hopefully you enjoy tonight. And uh, Agape family, we just want to let you know we all miss you and that our prayers are uh, for you and that we look forward to getting back to church in a few weeks and uh, hearing our praise music and, you know, having everybody hug and, and uh, just talking and fellowshipping. That's very special at Agape, and you know, we miss you. Um, to my message, the name of the message is, I will get through this. Every day, media and social media remind us about the storm that the world is facing. You know, you look outside, you know, they're taking some things away from us. Uh, basically, we can't go to the movies anymore. You know, you can only go to the supermarket or the gas stations. The banks now, it's drive through And, uh, you know, basically every day we're just getting up and, and enjoying life. You know, I think of the storm that, the biggest storm I have to face is uh, Jackson. Every day, you know, I got to figure out what we're going to do. And uh, he tires me out. But, you know, I just thank God for my family. Like Emma, she's working right now. And it's uh, kind of neat watching her evolve into the workforce. And then she comes home and studies. And, you know, what we're doing a lot right now is bonding at home. It's kind of nice. We're hanging out. We're talking. Um, you know, just enjoying each other's family. Here's the thing. I smile because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Every day I get up, you know, like I said about social media and media, they have a way of portraying what life has for us. And, you know, and I understand, but for me, the only truth I have is from the Bible. Um, I haven't changed what I do. I just keep a six foot distance and I learned something new. I no longer fist bump, you know, or elbow bump. Now I pulled off the uh, David Hasselhoff thing. You know, I, time I see something, I go like this. You know, I just, I just want to have fun. And uh, I just have to change some things. Uh, I'm not worried or scared about the coronavirus. We are taking precautions, but we include God in every decision. For, uh, for I know I have plans for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. See, the word assures us that we are more than conquerors. Now getting back to the storm that is coming against everyone, don't let that dictate what you're going to do. Don't let it dictate your life. Don't let it dictate how you're going to feel, um, you know, how you're going to do things with your family. Don't let it upset you. That's not who you are. Don't stop living. Use this time to build a relationship with the Father. You have a purpose, but your purpose does not change in a storm. You know, I think of the things for Agape. Right now we're at home. You know, I have to do some things different. I can't go back to the office, so my office is home. But what I'm doing is I'm still reading, still studying, still getting things prepared for the next few weeks when we go back. You know, the ideas he's given me, I haven't stopped there. See, we don't, stir, we don't serve a stagnant God. We serve a God who's always on the move. You know, the things he's going to give you today, write them down. Put them down on a tablet. Write them down, you know, if you have to go to your computer. But he's given you things, but this is your time to study. This is your time to get in with him. See, our purpose is to tell people about Jesus verbally and visually by the way we live our lives. Whenever I see people at the supermarket, you know, they say, hey, Joe, how you doing? I say, you know, I'm doing great. They said, does this bother you? I said, no, not at all. I said, to be real, it's kind of like an extended vacation, except I can't go anywhere. And um, I just continue, you know, each day get up and smile, you know, watch what I'm eating because I tell you that food is so good. You know, I love food. And I thank God they haven't closed the uh, drive throughs yet, but... I haven't been in a little lot of them yet, still working on things. Uh, last week, you talk about visually, you know, living our lives. Last week, I was playing basketball with a buddy of mine, and yes, we didn't have 10 guys, but the cool thing was, there was a guy who came in, and uh, he's from Pecani, and I coached against him when he was in high school. Well, here we are meeting up with each other, and, you know, I don't really know, he doesn't remember me, but we were playing, enjoying, you know, having a good time. And we played a couple games. It was about an hour and a half. And he said, okay, guys, I got to go. But he said, hey, can I uh, have you guys circle around? I said, yeah. He goes, I want to pray with you guys. And right there, that just totally blew me away. 
you know, we all grabbed hands. Here we are, cars passing by. And you have, you know, like about six guys praying. But what he said in his prayer was so strong. And it really affected me to the point where, you know what? Here, here's God again, showing up and showing out. And, you know, I needed that. And here we are. We have to be role models. But we also have to let everybody know that the crisis in us exists. You know, in this world, there's a lot of people that are going through fear. And their faith is being tested. But a lot of us who, you know, go to agape or a lot of us who study and, 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 and you know, we walk by faith and not by sight. This is where we can exercise and show people what our faith can do, what God can do. You know, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of stories in the Bible where people were challenged. You know, I look when, uh, you know, when God told uh, Moses, you know, he says, hey, he says, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put a plague on. And he says, and what I want you to do is obey what I'm going to say. And the children, you know, the firstborn will live. Well, he obeyed it. And, you know, he told the people what to do. And they put the blood of the lamb over the doorway. And the spirit of death, when it came that night, None of the children got harmed. But here's the part. When you know what you're reading and you understand it and you get it in your spirit, it's just a way of life. And here's the thing. What's going on right now, it has no effect on us. On our, what I'm talking on our body, on our spiritual man. Why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. You know, I think when I said God will show up and show out, when the Spirit of God comes on you like a raging fire and the Holy Spirit says pray, don't hesitate. You know, I think about that gentleman when he prayed for us. I think the Holy Spirit was speaking through him to pray for us. Because there could be, like in that group, there could be maybe one or two guys that are going through something. But just that reassurance of prayer, just that reassurance that you can make it will help you through a day. It could help you through the whole week. It could help you till you know, everything gets back to normal. Here's the thing. Don't just do it. No, say, I did it in the name of Jesus. See, God's love is life-saving, merciful, and compassionate. See, through Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit lives in us, and His love flows through us. See, every day we have to gird up and put the armor of God on, and we have to continue to stay prayed up. See, like staying prayed up, as soon as, you know, things start to get a little hefty, get a little tougher, you know, I said, you know what, God, I got to up my game. He goes, up your game? I said, yeah. I said, I'm praying, but I need to pray more. And uh, every night before I go to bed, you know, I pray these three scriptures, Psalms 91.10, Isaiah 54.17, and 1 Peter 2.24. The Lord says, is that it at night? He said, why don't you pray in the morning? He said, don't leave it up to your wife. Pray in the morning. I said, okay. So I use that and I pray in the morning. But then he said, go a step further. I want you to pray in the middle of the day. And he says, when you continue to do that, you're building yourself up. And you're showing yourself what you can do through me. And I said, wow, God. He goes, Joe, do you know whose you are? I said, yeah. I said, I'm yours. He said, yes, you are mine. He said, you're child of the Most High God. He said, I've given you the tools. He said, I've given you the resources. He says, now it's time to apply them. He said, but don't just stop there. He says, use your gift to tell other people, to lift people up, to build them up, to let them know that they're going to be okay. I said, okay, God. And then when I started writing stuff down, I said, you know what? We serve the King of Kings, the way maker, the promise keeper. You know, he's our light in the darkness. See, but there's power in the name of Jesus. I encourage you to put your praise music on. Yes, sometimes, even including myself, I love listening to the 80s, the 90s. But once again, God said, what can that do for you? That's music of the past. You need to hear my music of the here and now. I said, really? I said, why are you, you know, <laughs> why are you talking to me like this? He says, because you need it. I said, well, okay. And then he also gave me a scripture, Ephesians 6, verse 18. Praying in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers, requests, with this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So, you know, you look at Pastor, that's why he makes it a purpose to pray for you at 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock, or if you call him in the afternoon to come and pray for you at the hospital or at your house. You think he keeps that in mind, the Word is in his Spirit, and that's all that comes out. The more you build up, the stronger you get. The more you eat, I'm going to say it this way, you know, your clothes will fit a little different. But if you go to the work, you go work out, and you hit the treadmill, or you walk, you, you start to see a change in your life. And what happens with that change? You feel more comfortable, you got a little more pep in your step, and you start to enjoy things. See, the anointing will defeat Satan at his tracks, and you will continue to live a life of victory, not defeat. See, my God has the final say. 
You say, well, is there a scripture for that? Proverbs 16.1 says, We humans make plans, but the Lord has the final word. He had the final say for Daniel in the den when those lions were hungry. He had the final say for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember, he is in the fire with you, and with him all things are possible. Let the good news of victory saturate your spirit. Jesus tells us that we will have troubles in this world. It's a guarantee. However, he also promises that we have the victory through our faith because Jesus Christ has overcome the world. If you're facing hard and uncertain times, you can be encouraged to press on knowing that you are an overcomer. Here's the thing. The Bible verses, continue to study those, continue to believe those, continue to get them in your spirit. And I tell you, that faith is going to lift you up in the hard times because you have something to back it up. Your tank will not be empty. Your tank will be full, full of the Word of God. Pretty soon, people are going to see you and say, hey, you know, what's so different about you? You can smile and say, you know what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Good days, bad days, and just okay days, they're all part of life. But as these Bible verses remind us, God is there for support through all the ups and downs. See, here's the thing. He sees the decisions, the tribulations, and the celebrations that are all part of our everyday life. Your faith plays an important role in your life, and these verses serve as reminders for ways to strengthen your relationship with God. The Bible verses about life could refresh your spirit and renew your faith. Whether you've been spending too much time worrying about the small stuff, well, you know, are we going to make it? Here's the thing, going back to social media, if you spend so much time on Facebook, you're going to start to believe everything in it. If you start to read the, see the news and, and you start to say, oh my goodness, this is going to happen, this, this, and this, what does God have to say about it? What does he have to say for you? Does he say you're going to get sick? Does he say you're going to go hungry? Does he say you're going to suffer? No. Here's the thing. Matthew 6, 25 has something to say for that. Don't worry. If you've been wondering how you can share God's grace with others, going back to my buddy who all prayed for us, check out Acts 20, verse 24. Let me tell you something. Don't worry. You will finish the race. You're a winner and you'll succeed and do whatever God has called you to do. See, the Bible verses provide guidance and light. Looking through the scriptures, you'll find many verses that give you strength, guide you on your journey through life, and offer comfort when things get tough. Let me share something with you. You have the authority as a believer, and your greatest weapon you have is speaking against sickness and disease with scriptures, speaking against doubt and belief with scriptures, speaking against the enemy with scriptures, speaking against fear with scriptures. As you believe you are God's property, not one hair in your head can fall to the ground without God's permission. No matter how the devil and his demons come against you, you will prevail against them. And guess what? Overcome them. Coronavirus has no authority over your house, over my house. Sickness and disease have no authority over anyone's house. Psalms 91.10 says, No evil will conquer you. No plague will conquer, will come near your home. See, God's protection come in the form of peace and strength in the middle of despair, possibly in the form of angels. Let me, get out. Let me move one second for that. You know, the peace, I go to bed, man, I knock out. I get up in the morning, I'm happy as can be. Why? Because the scriptures that I speak over my family's life and my life, I know and I'm assured through these scriptures that God is not a liar. So you need protection, you don't need to pay for it. The price was paid already at the cross. God's protection come in the form of peace and strength, like I said. The Bible says in Psalms 91.11, God will command his angels to protect you wherever you go. See, when we go to Kroger's, Myers, or Qdoba, because I love authentic Mexican food, we're protected by the word and his angels. I don't walk in nervous and afraid, thinking, oh my goodness, I can't be here, I can't be there. Oh my goodness, babe, watch where you're going. No, I know who's protecting me. I know whose I am. See, God is my protector, my defender. He's my buffer. He's my guardian. He's my fortress. And you cannot defeat the king of kings who has never lost a fight. See, Satan is a god of darkness. But here's something for you. My God turned on the light and exposed him for what he really is. And that is a fraud. Satan thought he defeated Jesus when he was crucified. Death couldn't handle him and the grave couldn't hold him. See, as the Bible says in John 8 verse 44, For he is a liar and the father of many lies. 
I like the greatest quote from the movie Elf. In other words, he sits on a throne of lies. And yes, I know you heard it from the movie, but let me share something with you. It's the truth. If you're feeling down, defeated, or even challenged, no circumstance, no challenge is too hard for God. We serve a God of second chances. We serve a God who will, re who will recompense you. The trial may be hard, but he is with you and he will see you through it. But you have to use your faith and trust he will do what he said when he said he will do it. Satan attacked Job by striking him with severe boils from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. But that didn't stop Joel from stopping, from quitting, from giving up. His wife even said, denounce God. He said, no way. But here's the thing. God recompensed him and gave him back double. Instead of being a millionaire, I can't even add that high, probably a trillionaire. Very rich. But see, here's something. Don't look at where you are. Look what you're going to do, what you're going to be. Because God has something special for you. See, Satan, he took everything from this man. But what he couldn't take was his will to survive. What is your will? Are you willing to move forward? Are you willing to get through this? Don't just survive. Live. Have a will. There's a gentleman, a friend of ours, who was given the uh, sentence to die. And you know what? They put him on certain drugs to, you know, make him feel better. Uh, he was supposed to have been gone, I believe, a week and a half ago. And he was sitting up his bed, up on his bed four days later. And now he's in a wheelchair outside, smiling, looking around. See, this man is strong and his will is keeping him alive. See, the world can tell you one thing, but my God can give you another. Speak words of faith, hope, and love, not fear, despair, and hate. What has happened right now in this world shall pass. See, the church of Jesus Christ is marching on. You know you are the church, and that means you are marching on. And the gates of hate shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. Why? Because the church is above the body of Christ and her head, and Jesus Christ is above all. See, we serve the, we, we have the, the real commander-in-chief. He's backing us up. See, the Bible says in Matthew 10, 28, Therefore do not fear him who after killing the body has no power over the soul in hell. See, these past two weeks, I know your spirit man has been challenged to the point where all you hear is negativity. Like I said earlier, man, social media media can really, you know, downplay things inside. But continue to use your scriptures. Continue to know what they are. You know, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That means no weapon formed. You know, 1 Peter 2, 24, he personally carried our sins in his body and on the cross willingly offering himself on it as an altar of sacrifice so that we might die to sin, becoming immune from the penalty and power of sin and to live for the righteousness for by his wounds who believe, which is you and I, have been healed. See, these past two weeks, Yes, they have been very exhausting, but I guarantee it, your faith, hope, and love, yes, you say they are challenged, but I'm telling you, nah, you have the answers. It's inside of you. You know, going back to my son, you know, the challenges that he, uh, you know, all he thinks about right now is eating, uh, playing, and sleeping. And, you know, all I can think of is, oh my goodness, how am I going to uh, keep the challenge up with this kid? Let me tell you what. I just want to have a little fun here. I've had many ninja fights with him, army battles, played many board games. We've taken walks, bike rides. I try to tire him out. But as some days go on, man, this guy, he gets more energy. Here's the thing. Don't get tired and look where, you're, where it's going on right now. Don't give up and don't quit. Continue to stay on task. You know, I like our pastor. What our pastor teaches us. We have a pastor that's full of fire, that's full of faith. And thank God, that's how we are. We're very strong. We are very strong people. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Here's the thing. You have the greatest gift that no one can ever take from you. And that's protection through the blood of God. Here's the thing. We're truly, like I said. Oh, let me move down. Excuse me. Let me say this. As time progresses, continue to trust in the word. You know, the biggest thing I see, Agape, and people that are listening right now, we just have to continue to stay strong. We have to continue to look at our DVDs, listen to our CDs, study our word, and know that his word has the final say. You know, I look at people that have gone through uh, situations in the Bible. No matter what, God has come through. 
you know, don't be, don't look at the problem. I don't want to get off. Let me say it this way. Let's just continue to stay on task with God. So as you go on today and you enjoy tonight, I hope you enjoyed this message. Um, I was excited, you know, when Dad told me I was going to teach. Um, it, it, it's, it's very good in this time right now. They're always, they're talking two weeks that uh, we will be back. So we're looking to April 15th to being back at church. Still have to wait for the okay. But we're excited to see everyone. We're excited to get our praise on. Excited to talk with everybody, to hear Pastor, to hear Reverend Sherman, and um, hear Dr. Phil, to hear a feel up on the with the choir. You know, to to see our ushers, JT Smile, just to see everybody. And if I left anyone out, I'm still talking about you. But it's just good. That's the family we have. Agape, Pastor is so proud of you. Pastor calls me and says, "Son, we have a strong congregation," and he is right. Because you're standing on the word. You're trusting everything that he says. God is not dead. He's still alive. And man, you know what? Dance. Praise him. Put on your praise music. Shout to the rooftops. And let the world know that he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. God will continue to bless you through these times. But to me, it's just another day. I don't look at anything bad. I look at it good. Because every day, this is a gift that God has given you. A gift to live a gift to breathe, a gift to walk, a gift to talk to your children, a gift to get on the phone and say hello to a loved one. You know what? This is a time where you can really eat and, and, and have communion with God. You can get your family around the table and have communion. You know, you can share scriptures with your family so they don't want to hear it. I tell you what, your kids love you so much. Your family loves you that they're willing to do things. You know, this is a time where we've gotten real close as a family, closer than ever, because, you know, we have nowhere to go. But I'm starting to enjoy this. I'm enjoying this to the point where I can listen to my son even more. I can focus even more than I've ever on certain things. And it's just exciting. But I cannot wait till we were able to go back to Agape, get back to go to the restaurant, get back to go to the movies, get back to fellowship and go to someone's house. <laughs> I'm so excited for all that. I'm excited to get outside. I miss a lot of things, but I also am glad that we are healthy, we're born again, we're saved, and man, and with God, all things are possible. So Agape, we love you, and have a great night.